Okay, so what did you want to read from? So I've got um, I've got something from the Divine Retribution, which is the fourth and final book of the Divine Devils series, which we'll we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so we'll see how I how I can do this reading. So that's always a always fun. But a little bit of context: the, he's a hunter divine. He's a former U.S. marshal, and in this book, he's on the run for a murder he didn't commit, and he's meeting uh, with his estranged father, Horace who claims he has information to help him at the burial site of his mother, Isadora. So lots of twists and turns there. So, so with breakfast devoured, Hunter drove off and arrived at the cemetery early. He parked several blocks away from where his mother's grave was and watched for any, anyone to arrive. Nothing he spied appeared out of the ordinary, which was good. He was being cautious, for he understood Horace's history of looking out only for himself. It wasn't long before a red BMW arrived, and parked along a curb. Horace stepped out dressed in black slacks and silk shirt, his violet tie blowing in the breeze. He walked to the grave, a bundle of flowers in his hand, which he placed to the side near the flowers Grace had previously left. He knelt to the ground and touched the stone, a good show he put on, or so Hunter thought. Hunter waited until 15 minutes after 11, then fired up his motorcycle and parked behind the luxury car. He went to where Horace knelt, kept his distance, and waited for him to stand. Horace wiped a tear from his cheek. Hunter never believed for a second his father had ever cried about anything, short of when the money ran out, and he worried about where the next female cash cow would come from. Your mother was a good woman, Horace said. She was a great woman, Hunter nodded, then scowled. Too great to be with a man like you. As I've told you many times, I loved Isadora with all my heart. Hunter made a fist. Save the propaganda. What was the big emergency that made you drive all the way to Houston? Did your rich widow finally learn you're a crooked gold digger and throw you out? I don't care for who for you calling me that, Horace. Horace took a step toward Hunter. I'm still your father. Show me some respect. Hunter didn't move. Stand back, old man, before I deck you. They were nearly nose to nose. A stare down Horace knew he couldn't win. He stepped back and held up his hands. Fine, I came here to talk, not to fight. Hunter put his hands on his waist. I'm listening. I wanted to warn you, I received a call from a Colorado detective. Said you were in trouble and wondered if I knew where you were. Hunter pointed his finger at Horace. Did you squeal on me? Horace waved both his hands at Hunter. No, no, of course not. But I was concerned about what they told me. He leaned forward as if others were around to listen. They said you killed some woman, shot her dead in an apartment you were living in, and then split. Hunter glanced around and wondered if they were being watched. Not that it matters to me what you think, but I'll flat out tell you right now I didn't kill Nicole. Is that the truth? Absolutely. I cared for her. Hunter tapped his chest with his fist. People who paid the man to kill her wanted me to run. Said if I didn't, they'd kill others I cared for. Wow, I didn't know. Seems like a bad situation. Maybe you should talk with the police to get, the, get it ironed out. I didn't think I'd get the benefit of a doubt from them because of my darker skin tone. Hunter tapped his forearm, on his fin tapped his forearm with his finger. And since when are you a fan of the police? Horace blinked twice. I'm not. I'm just saying. Maybe you should go, go to them and clear your name. I like my chances of ironing out the situation on my own. Horace frowned. How would you be able to resolve the situation? By using the skills I have to get answers, which I can't do behind bars. Horace paused to contemplate what to say next. You know the old saying, only guilty men run. Horace tensed up. Are you saying you don't believe me? Horace gritted his teeth, gestured with his hands. Not really. I see how angry you are and wonder if you, if you could have killed her. You appear to be a passionate man with violent urges. Hunter was passionate and had done violent acts, especially since coming back to the world from his downtrodden days. But he wasn't about to admit, admit this to the man for whom he had no respect. As usual, you're dead wrong, Horace. I have no more time to waste on you. Hunter started to walk away when Horace went to grab his arm. Wait, Hunter, or they might shoot you. Hunter yanked his arm loose, not thrilled Horace had touched him. What the hell are you talking about? They have a gun pointed at you. You need to give yourself up. Hunter looked around and saw a man walking toward him, gun in hand, 
pointed at his chest. What the hell did you do, Horace? Hunter yelled. Horace took a step back. I put your hands in the air. Hunter, I'd do as he said, called out the man with the gun. Who the hell are you? Detective Green with the Broomfield, Colorado Police. We were listening in. We were taking you in for, for questioning about the murder of Nicole Hardy. Hunter put his hands up while glaring at Horace. USOB, were you wearing a wire? Horace instinctively itched at his shirt. Damn tape holding, holding it to my chest is itchy. They had to shave some of my hair off. Why would you help them arrest your son? Son, Horace laughed. You made it clear a long time ago I'm not your father. Why the hell should I consider you to be my son? He moved closer. The Hardy family put out a $25,000 reward for the arrest of the person who killed your daughter. Horace rubbed two fingers together. I'm only in it for the payday. Hunter groaned. Nothing new there, but I'd hate to disappoint you and Detective Green, but I didn't kill Nicole. Arresting me is a fool's errand. While a car pulled up and a door opened, Green moved closer. Another detective stepped out, his gun pointed at Hunter. We'll find out in time. Green lowered his gun. Once we get you back to Colorado, we can sort all of this out. Then I guess I'll give you something worth arresting me for. Horace had remained close to Hunter, well within striking distance. In a flash, Hunter lowered his right hand and popped Horace in the nose, knocking him backward and down to the ground. Blood flowed down his face, the direct punch inflicting damage. No more words would come out of his mouth to anger Hunter, for he was out cold. Hunter's hand was immediately back up, happy for the other happy the other officer hadn't shot him. He spit the ground and then smiled. I told you I'd deck you, old man, if you screwed with me, and I'm a man of my word which I sure as hell couldn't say about you. It was the only happy moment Hunter would have to reflect on for the next several days. Wow. That that was really good. That Really good. That surprised me. <laughs> me too. <laughs> that, it's, always, that was, it's always tough to read and pick out a section out of your book. And I was looking at stuff and, you know, keep trying to keep it not too long and everything. And I did have to clean up a few of the words in there as well. I, I mentioned that my, my books are, fairly gritty so there is some street language in there and some profanity and all that um just because of the world that uh in this series which you know we'll talk about a little bit more but uh hunter divine is in uh in in deep with some bad uh, against some bad people 